Hi, I'm James Butler, <laughs> and I'm here shooting The Sea Wolf. It's a German film, and uh, out here at your tank film studio. I love the Bahamas. Actually, I have family from the Bahamas, from generations to generations. Uh, Cat Island. I have some land there. I'm a butler, oh, and there's, everybody's a butler here, <laughs> just about. And it's my first time, and I'm having fun, really lots of fun. And my career started in stunts. I was a... Uh, a stuntman, stunt coordinator for about 10 years. And uh, then it, it, it evolved into acting. I was a childhood actor anyway. I come from a performing arts family. My mother's a jazz singer. And um, so I went back to my roots, uh, per se. And I love it. <laughs> and it's doing well. I just got uh, selected for the new in Miami CSI season that comes in January. We're going to start shooting. And um, I did Resident Evil, Mission Impossible 3. Uh, I just finished a film last year in Romania with Keith Sutherland. It's called Wanted that comes out, I guess, in December, so go check it out. It's a spooky kind of film, <laughs> a thriller. Um, oh God, the list is... And uh, in Germany, I'm uh, right now pretty much um, the only American actor on German television and film. That's also a long story. I did a film there as a stunt coordinator, and then I built a company there, and... Uh, end up going back and forth and then they said oh you can speak a little German because I took it in college and I said yes but at that time I was not telling the truth <laughs> <laughs> my German was rusty and so I um, uh, started working on it and they just lo loved me there and I, I, I love them too they're good people they're really fun I worked in Lithuania I worked in Hungary with uh, Aragon I've worked in uh, Oman which is a fantastic country you have to go there some most wonderful country, one of the best countries I've ever been in. I've worked all over Europe, Austria, uh, Italy, England. I worked for BBC with a, J a Jimi Hendrix story. Oh, gosh. What's coming up this year for you after you leave the Bahamas? I have James Bond. James Bond. Yeah, I have a small role in James Bond. I play a CIA guy that's uh, a little bit, his career is over, and he's the contact person in Europe for uh, Mr. Craig. So, from Mr. Bond. Now, off camera, you were giving us some insight on how the business works. Uh, you spend time in Europe, you come into the States, and give us uh, some more of that insight on camera as to how, you know, you have to be, stay close to L.A., you have to be accessible and all of that. Well, L.A. is fast-paced. And if you're away from L.A. too long, you know, actually the competition in L.A. is, is <laughs> big. You know, you can find actors in every restaurant or waiting on tables or cooking. So everybody's an actor in L.A. The taxi driver, if you go, what do you do? He goes, I'm an actor, and I'm just waiting for my big break. So you have to stay pretty much available in L.A. And I do it by having, I pendle back and forth from Europe to America. When I'm needed in America, I'm there. When I need it in, uh, in Europe, I'm there. It's, uh, it's difficult, but it's, it's the way to go. When you're single, it works. I think if I had, you know, married with, with a thousand kids, it probably wouldn't work as well. Can you tell us about your current role in The Sea Wolf? Well, first, I had to grow this stupid beard. <laughs> it took, I've been growing this since November. And, you know, it's like now, you know, it's, it's all, June in a couple of days. And uh, all the other guys have these huge beards, but this is, this is all I got. And my character is a guy named Smoke. Um, when I read the script, I also read the novel. Smoke is also very prevalent in the novel. And, uh, uh, you know, it's 1906, the only black guy on the ship. So he's in his 40s, so that means he was probably born a little bit after slavery and all that was over. So it's a difficult situation for him. So he's a hunter. So all the hunters have kind of an officer uh, status. So he had to be on the boat with Wolf Lazar for a long time. So he knows him pretty well. He knows that his ins and outs, his negative side. And Smoke stays in the middle. And he tries to keep humor throughout the, throughout the story because he tries to keep this balance from the negativity and, and, and everything that's going on. But he is never on anyone's side. His, his main purpose is hunting his seals, making his money, and moving on. I mean... He's a guy that would play you in a uh, game of cards and have six aces, you know. And if you caught him cheating, he might cut you. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> the, kind of, that's the kind of guy he is. And so I purposely, I, when I talk to the director about my character development, I, it's not written, but I purposely put him a little bit off. He's never in a group with the others. He's a little bit, 
little bit off to one side or the other throughout the film until Petra comes on board and she plays Maud. And then Smoke, she, she treats him because she's a lady. You know, in, in 1906, for a black man to see such a, a woman uh, or even be that close to that type of woman was not common. But she treats him like everybody else. So he borderline flirts with her and borderline plays this different thing. And if he gets bored, he causes a fight. He's a fighter. And he's getting beat down, shot, and <laughs> everything happens to Smoke, but he survives. You know, he doesn't die in this movie at all. He's a survivor. And he kind of motivates the, uh, this big riot that happens later on, on the, or this mutiny that happens later on the ship. And James, uh, for young persons who want to get into the industry, and older people, because everybody's needed. <laughs> These are the older people in for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give some information on what they should be doing. Oh, workshops, workshops, workshops. First, if you really want to be an actor, it's not uh, glamorous. I mean, uh, anybody that's been on this, this movie here, I always use the word gig. Um, We've been 12 to 14 hours out on the sea on an old, really old, beautifully done ship with pulling up the sails every morning, taking them down. You have a big respect for any, anybody that's a seaman or a sea woman. Um, but it's not glamorous. We're really uh, out there having sandwiches being shuttled in. And, and, and this is not just this film. Film work is not glamorous. So if you want to be an actor for the fame, this is not the place to be. If you want to be an actor for the money, <laughs> get a job at a bank. You know, you have to love it. it. It has to bite you in some way and you have to love it. And that's like, and do the, I call the road work. Do the theaters, do the workshops, do the Meissner techniques and Strasbourg techniques and work on your craft. In every film, every job, you can always learn something. There's a couple of actors here that I learn from all the time. I sit there and watch them and always be concentrated, always be on time. That can kill you if you're not. Eh? Yeah, it would, it would definitely kill you if you're not. And the production won't tell you. They'll go, it's okay, it's okay. And then you lose two, two jobs. <laughs> I want to thank the Bahamas for treating us so well here. Uh, the Pelican Bay, uh, I, I don't know if I should, can mention that or not, but I do because they were fantastic to us. Uh, the whole film studio team, including, there's, there's a couple names that, that I, I know for sure. Cowl, they call him. He's a character. He was really nice. But everybody, from Jackie to Sandra to everybody here has really treated us well and, 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 and very special. And they left us alone when we were walking around private, which is also very special. And I will come back. Promise.